as amazing as Beethoven's symphony is, there is another thing which is also amazing in this wonderful world we all live in. Literature. Literature has been and will keep on providing us with numerous amounts of entertainment and knowledge. Whether you are a Harry Potter fan, Hamlet fan, or the fan of any other kind of literary works, it is undeniable that whether we all like it or not, literature is a crucial part in our lives. On this occasion, we shall travel throughout the passages of time to learn how exactly Rowling's Harry Potter series, Lewis's Narnia series, or even um, Mayer's Twilight series, because why not, come into place. We will be studying about the history of the English literature. Now, in English literature, there are these periods which are called the period of Old English, Middle English, Early Modern English, and Modern English. Let us start with Old English. So Old English is the period when the Romans invaded the Celtics and the tribes which resided in the land of England. Celtics were the native tribes there. They often got attacked by the other tribes, so they asked for assistance from the Angles and Saxons, which are the external tribes outside of the Celtics. But unfortunately, the mild assistance from the Angles and Saxons soon turned into another layer of attack towers for Celtics themselves. You were the chosen one! Thus, widening the influence of the Angles and Saxons, and hence, the Old English is often called the Anglo-Saxon language. Anyways, there was the Roman colonization which impacted the language spoken, but we will not actually be covering that as the primary focus would be the literature during the Old English period. During this time, the primary form of literature was poetry, heroic poetry to be more specific, or what we call as epic. There were several types of poetry during the Old English period. Epic, a poem about legends, heroes, or warriors who want to achieve something and succeed in the end. Elegy, a poem majorly consisted of sadness or mournings over the dead. Ballad, entertainment in the form of songs. And idol, a poem about a particular personality that becomes a source of inspiration, a poem to inspire people. Most of the literary works during the Old English period were written by the ones who people do not know or anonymous. No one knows who the writers of certain works are, still there are a few names. For example, Aldum, one of his works was the Laude Virginitatis, a writing about the saints in Latin. Catmon, with his hymn, which is known as the most complicated known textual history of any surviving Anglo-Saxon poem, Kenilworth, The Fates of the Apostles, is one of his works, and Alfred, or King Alfred, also known as Alfred the Great, which his translation of several translations from Latin, including the pastor's book. There are a few more names, but the point is, there were not only epics during the Old English period. Aside from poetry and prose, there was also drama. The theaters were introduced by the Romans after their invasion of the land, expanding the literary possibilities during this time. Old English drama started as brief scenes illustrating the Bible stories before expanding into Greek and Latin drama. Now, you may be asking, why so many religious works? And no, I'm not saying that you are not a religious person. Well, Pope Gregory sent St. Augustine to Britain in 597 AD to spread Christianity, and the Romans were introducing the religion too to the Celtics during their friendly visit. But the primary literature during the Old English period is still poetry, especially epics, with Beowulf being the most renowned example. Beowulf is a poem about a Scandinavian warrior and his quest to defeat a monster known as Grendel, as well as a few more story branches including his rise towers, the position of a king, and his death in Vienna. In conclusion, Old English literature consisted largely of epics or heroic poems, and do note that the language of Old English utilized are difficult to be understood without the usage of special Old English dictionaries. For example, take a look at the excerpt from the poem Beowulf here. Can the general society understand it perfectly? No, they can't, of course not. This is all about the Old English literature. Next, we will be moving on to the Middle English literature. See you there. Created using Powtoon.